Hi, I'm Paul Marinis and Central Coast Council's Biosecurity Office of Weeds and I'm back again this week and I'm talking about lawn weeds. We all have them. There's no sense in saying that you don't because somewhere in your lawn there is a weed hiding. What we're going to do today is talk about some of the more common weeds that are found in lawns and what you can do about them. So some of the more common ones at the moment. Let's start with the biggie. People don't thinking about this one now but when they are thinking about it it's when it's too late. This little fella here, this is the dreaded bindi eye. Plenty of people don't think about it now, but they only think about it in summer when they're doing the bindi ballet. However, if you want to stop the bindi ballet, now this is sort of late autumn, early winter, this is the time that you've got to get into them. Because now they haven't got any prickles yet. Nothing, they haven't flowered, they haven't set seed. Now's the time you've got to kill them. And you can do that in a new number of ways. You can get down, hands and knees, little knife or a trowel, dig them out, bag them, throw them in the green waste bin. Alternatively, there are plenty of products you can get from the hardware store or nurseries. The main thing you need to remember if you're getting rid of bindies is you need to know what type of grass you have because there's a lot of the ones that'll kill bindies out there and if you've got buffalo, you won't have buffalo afterwards. So the trick with that one is, is to go out there, get stuck into it, make sure you get the right product and if you get them now, you can have a lovely lawn come summertime that you can walk on with bare feet and not have to worry about, am I going to get hurt? So that's one of the more common weeds at the moment. Other weeds that are starting to come up now is this guy here. This is winter grass. Now, as the name implies, this one mainly only grows in winter. Come the warm weather, it's going to turn yellow and die off. Now, a lot of people see this as a weed. But some people actually see it as a saviour. If they can't get their lawn to grow during summer, at least if with this, it does mow, it does regrow, but they've got a green lawn during winter. But a lot of people, if you've got a nice lawn, this will come up and it does look very different and it stands out. There are chemicals you can either hand remove, but if you've got a lot of it, there are specific chemicals that you can buy that will kill just winter grass. So something to bear in mind about. And if you do have it, you don't want it, don't make sure it doesn't get to this point where it's getting seeds because you've got a few years ahead of then working if it drops its seed. Another one that's a tough character in lawns, this is called Sporobolus or a Parramatta grass. Now, there are natives and there are weedy varieties of them. These form very thick, hard tussocks. They're very tough grass. These are best in most cases to be pulled out. You can get a sharp knife and cut just below the plant into the roots. The roots in the ground won't re-sprout. They're gonna die. And then you get this, bag it up, Make sure that if it's got seed like this one does that you put it into the bag straight away, don't lay it on the lawn because next year you're going to get it a patch right there. So bag it up, green waste bin yet again and you can get rid of that one. It usually will stand out more if you haven't mown for a couple of weeks and the lawn's growing. This will grow taller than your other grasses and it'll grow in like a little clump so it very stands out very much like that. Next we have another grass, Paspalum. Now it'll grow either flat if you continually mow and sometimes it'll get quite taller. It gets a fairly characteristic seed head that gets these long bits that get little tiny black bits down the seed head. And this is once again a tough grass. It spreads, it'll cover over your other lawn and it will actually choke it out. You really don't want that. So once again, you can either use a method that is mentioned in another video where you get the, uh, the washing up brush that you use with glyphosate or herbicide and you dab it onto it. Or better yet, get down there with a knife, like I've done here, just cut the roots just below the surface the underground parts can't regrow and you're going to land up with a lawn that gets less of this and more of the grass that you want. Another one we're getting at the moment is this fella called mouse ear chickweed. This is one of these ones that regular mowing will control but if you don't regularly mow this will pop up. This also prefers areas of your garden that are a little bit shaded and a little bit more moist in the lawn. With areas like that if you can get more sun in there by doing some pruning, that's a good idea. And if things are a bit moist in the garden as well, try to look at improving your um, drainage. may have to add some drainage or relieving compaction. But even just regular mowing will make fellas like this just disappear. Another one we're getting is called South Thistle. This one starts out looking like this. Eventually we'll get quite tall. When you break a leaf, it gets a milky sap that comes out. The sap won't hurt you, but it gets little flowers on the top, usually a small yellow flower with fluffy seeds afterwards. This is another one that really doesn't like mowing. So a regular light mow will control that fella as well. Now next we have, I'll put these over here. 
Next we have two plants that are often mistaken to be one and the same. And they are, unfortunately I don't have a flower for this one, dandelion, to some people a weed, some people a food, a beverage, uh, a salad green. So that's dandelion. And this one is called cat's ear. Now, when they're flowering, they look very similar. They both grow in a similar way on the ground with flat leaves. The difference is, this one, they get a very similar flower, but when you get one flower stalk, you get one flower. With this one flowers, you'll get one flower stalk, but you'll get multiple flowers coming off the top of that little branch. The other one is, these ones, the stem is always hollow on dandelion. On the cat's ear, the stem is not hollow. It's a green stem and it's usually got very fine ridges running up the stem, whereas this is paler and hollow. The other difference is as well, that if you look at the leaves on dandelion, there's no hairs on the leaves at all. Whereas cat's ear, which is where the name comes from, if you look up close on the leaf, you'll see it's covered in very fine hairs that look close up, just like the hairs on the inside of a cat's ear. Hence why it's called cat's ear. Some plants are very originally named. So these two can be very much mistaken for one another. You treat them in the same way, but the main difference is that if you have got pasture and you have horses, this one can cause a disease called string halt in horses, whereas this one is quite good fodder for horses. They love it. If grass is going a little bit off in palatability because it's growing too fast, that's a great substitute for them to feed on. So dandelion, also the other ways, these will get sometimes jagged edges to the leaves, but not to the level of dandelion. This one's actually really quite dissected leaves. And dandelion is just French for meaning tooth of the lion. And you can sort of see they look a bit like jagged teeth. So dandelion and cat's ear. Another one that looks similar to both of those is a series of plants called cudweeds. Once again, they grow low on the ground. They'll smother everything. These particularly like coming up after we've had a drought like we have recently because the grass hasn't been able to resist the seeds germinating because the grass had been um, had dried back. The main way of distinguishing these fellas is green on top, pale underneath. The leaves always have a paler silver or white underside to the leaf and they're smooth. There's a couple of different varieties. Some of them will also have what feels like a bit of a furrier leaf and they've also got the pale undersides. But these are called cudweeds. Nothing much eats them. So they're a good idea to get rid of as well. Another one as well is different species of clover. Now, if you're like me and you have anaphylaxis to bees, Clover's not your best friend because bees love coming in for this stuff. There are chemicals that you can do to get rid of them because trying to dig it out is near on impossible because the root system is very extensive and it'll keep coming back from them. But having these can also make that lawn a bit greener around it because they fix atmospheric nitrogen um, like wattles do. But if you've got bees and you want bees, good. This is great to have, gives you lots of nectar. But if you are like me and you don't overly keen on having bees around, you might want to get rid of your clover. Next we have plantain. Now plantains aren't just large bananas that are used as a vegetable, they're also a weed. This one's called plantain. It's very um, recognisable by the very prominent ridges down the leaves. It gets a little tiny white flower at the top with little stamens that stick out off the side. And it's actually a very close relative of the plant that we get things like psyllium husk, which is um, usually used as a sort of a laxative. It comes from the exact same species of plant as this. It's a, a plantago. And that's the botanical name. Plantain is the common name. And these, once again, cover the ground, also favoured after droughts as well. Now, if you've ever driven around the central coast, particularly in the bottoms of valleys, you will see lots and lots and lots of yellow flowers. And that's this guy. This will come up in your lawn too. The seeds will blow for over 40 kilometres from infestations. This is called fireweed. Now, fireweed is called that because if animals eat it, supposedly it causes them to burn inside the mouth. Um, it's unpalatable. In things like horses and cattle, it can cause liver damage. Sheep and goats are more resistant to it, but most people won't have sheep or goats or cattle or horses in their front yard. But this one, once established, if you do mow it, it'll just basically re from the bottom and try to flower again. So these are best just hand pulled out. They usually, after a bit of rain, pull out very readily, toss them in the green bin. Don't make the mistake of pulling it out and leaving it on the ground to dry. If it's got a flower on it when you pull it out, there is enough energy in that plant for those flowers to go through, produce seed 
and blow the seed into the grass and around there, even when the rest of the plant is dead. So always a good idea, get rid of that. Another one that does come up in gardens and lawns as well is called Canadian fleabane. Now this plant here is a very short one. They start out with a little rosette like that and rapidly get up to about, say, between two, two and a half metres tall eventually. And they get a series of little white flowers that come out um, sort of a white to a bone colour and they've got a windborne seed and they spread everywhere like crazy. So once again, these ones don't overly like being mown. So you can get rid of that. Next we have, this one is more, does get into lawns, but is more a, um, this is more of a favourite of pavers. Pavers and these plant go together very well. This is a plant called four leaf all seed. And it loves popping up all through paving stones. So a good idea with this one is catch it early before it sets seed. And then there are products that you can buy with pavers that you can say use a pressure cleaner, get rid of the old sand out of there, wait for it to dry. And there's sands that you can buy that you sweep in you give it a light watering to and they'll lock between the pavers and stop any weed seeds from being able to lay there and be able to germinate. It basically makes it solid like the pavers. But you can also very easily later on if you want to pull out the pavers, it'll break and you can move it apart. So that's one way of keeping out four leaf all seed out of your pavers. This one looks a bit like Bindi on steroids, but in fact, this is wild carrot and it is actually related to carrots. It just doesn't get a root that you can really eat. But if you actually get it and you rub the leaves, it smells just like carrot tops. This is quite a common weed. It's come up, particularly moves around a lot of the time on under mowers or mowing equipment on people's feet. Um, it also doesn't mind areas that have been compacted by foot traffic or where people drive and park on the grass, things like that. This one particularly doesn't mind growing in those situations. So it gets the same like little seed flowers like carrots and uh, very similar to what you get on dill weed as well, which is related to it as well. There's that one. Now, this one gets in gardens, it's called Petty Spurge. Now, it does have some other uses. Uh, I'll leave that for you to look up if you look up Petty Spurge. But in gardens and lawns, it does come up. It can be a bit of a pest. It doesn't like being mown. So if you've got it in the lawn, just keep mowing it and it'll go away. But in gardens, it gets a little out of control. Main thing is to get it before it sets seed and flowers but it's got very small ones, so you need to keep an eye out, get them when they're small. And also, it's a good idea to wear gloves when pulling this out. Some people do react to it and they can get some contact dermatitis. Now, last but not least, this is the weed that we get most requests to identify. This is called variously written names. Some people call it Mexican clover, Brazilian clover. It is from Brazil, it isn't a clover, but this is called, botanical name is Ricardia. Now, Ricardia will smother lawns. Initially, when we used to find it, it only grew in the sandy areas of the coast. It now grows in all soil types. It is readily spread on shoes, mowing equipment, um, tires, a whole range of ways. Also top dressing, if you've got top dressing from not a reputable supplier. That's how we think it first came into the coast. People back in the 1970s, we're buying cheap topsoil from up around the uh, Roman Terrace area and everyone that used it, funnily enough, had this weed come up. It's been known to be up in the Hunter uh, since about the 1940s. So, Ricardia. People ask us, right, how do I get rid of it? Well, unfortunately, you need to get one of these, you nail it into the plant and then you hang a for sale sign and you sell your house. Unfortunately, that's about the only way. It gets a tap root that can get about 450 millimetres, 45 centimetres long. If you break it off and there's still about that much in the ground, it'll grow back to the surface and start a whole new plant. If you spray this with pretty much every herbicide, it will brown the leaves off, look dead, re-sprout back again, and also the seeds that were underneath that will germinate, so you'll end up with a thicker patch than you started with. What we recommend is with a lot of these weeds. There's a few tips I'm going to give you that you can do that's going to help stop a lot of these from coming in in the first place. First thing is, never mow low. If you mow the lawn low, it's a false economy. People think if I do it, I don't need to mow again for ages. When you scalp a lawn, which is mowing too low, you leave the soil open to sunlight. And if you get the sunlight on the soil, 99% of these weeds germinate by having sunlight contacting the soil. If you can keep your grass thick and lush, and the sun doesn't get down to the soil, you don't have to water as much, 
you get a better quality of lawn and the roots will go deeper because they don't get cooked. And the other thing as well is that it'll resist a lot of these weeds by being thick and lush. The second thing is don't over fertilise. Most fertilisers for lawns are very high in nitrogen. You get a lot of leaf growth, but you don't get much else. You don't get roots developing, you don't get stem growth. So light fertilisers of a balanced fertiliser, so um, sort of fairly regularly, about every six to eight weeks. Deep, infrequent waterings. You get people that get out there, they water their lawn every afternoon and they give it about five minutes of water on a little patch and move on. What that does is encourage the grass roots to stay near the surface where unfortunately you get hot weather, you've gone away for a day or two, your lawn cooks out, dries out and dies. So by deep, infrequent waterings, it makes the roots go down deep to get to that water and you land up with a tougher, stronger lawn overall. So combination of not mowing too low, light frequent, of frequent light fertilisings with a balanced fertiliser, deep infrequent waterings, and a lot of these weeds won't be an issue for you. The main other thing to do is, is to know the pH of your soil. A lot of areas have very low pH. We don't have very many areas on the central coast with high pH, but at low pH, a lot of these weeds will grow where grass won't. So what you can do is, you can get a pH kit test done. There are plenty of tests. You can even get tests from nurseries and do it yourself. But there are also people such as the Department of Primary Industries. This kit is free. You just pay for the tests that you want done. It has instructions inside how to take your soil sample and send it off. And they'll come back to you and they'll tell you what your pH is and what you'll need to do to correct it to come back to the right level. A lot of people think that seven neutral pH is great. Around here, not necessarily between six, six and a half pH is great. We have actually had some people's lawns and, and, and paddocks as well have been tested and they're down around the four, which is about almost vinegar. So it's a really good idea. Get your pH checked because a lot of the time, many fertilisers you can put on, but if your pH is too low, the fertiliser is insoluble and the plants can't take it up. So a good idea is getting your pH right, nutrients right, and you'll, your lawn will be right. I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.